I have an idea. It's an idea that I've been watching um, sprout and grow over the last five years from Kauai to Kau. And it's not a new idea. The idea is to reconnect our young people with the land, with the aina, the source of human, community, and ecosystem health. The idea is to rebuild school learning gardens in grades K to 8. Oh, where's my first slide? To rebuild school learning gardens in K to 8 and to revitalize our high school agriculture programs in grades 9 to 12. To rethink our young farmer training programs and to really um, start an official farm to school program in the state of Hawaii. When these ideas are fully implemented and supported, probably through a partnership between community and government, it will have the ability to reconnect our young people with the land and shift our ideas of what we think about education today. So as you know, we live in a very transitional time right now, a very volatile time, when the old ideas of the past are setting and simultaneously new ideas for the future are rising. I think that school learning gardens and school farms are a rising idea that will help us reform the way we think about education and learning today and will give our young people a chance to work with these real living dynamic systems of change, something that they will surely need to do in their lifetime. You know, there was a time in Hawaii up and through the uh, mid-1970s when every school on Hawaii Island had a large garden and the children worked in that garden. It was part of their classroom work. The food was taken to the cafeteria where there was a real staff cooking. They took that food from the children and they incorporated it into the lunch and then they fed it to the children. And today this would be illegal. So we clearly have a lot more um, work to do here. But luckily, the Hawaiians have led the way, creating food self-reliance and complex systems of agriculture for over a thousand years. You know, up into early 1970s, again, many people in Hawaii lived really, really close to the earth. They had backyard gardens and fruit trees. They hunted, fished. They exchanged food with their neighbors. But over the last um, two generations, that the number of people doing that has decreased until today we have really become a society of consumers rather than producers. And this change has had um, consequences. And one of the consequences has been our children's health. So children today, as you may know, are experiencing health and diet related diseases that were unknown um, even one generation ago. According to the Superintendent of Schools report in 2010, 55% of Hawaii's children have special needs. According to another report that I have just read recently, 30% of them are overweight or obese and are beginning to experience those diet-related diseases of adult diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diseases that were actually unknown even one generation ago. In that same generation, there has been a rise in learning disabilities, ADD, ADHD, and autism. There has also been a rise in depression, especially among teens, as Hawaii now is the number one state in the US for teen suicide. So Richard Louv, who is, wrote a book a few years ago called The Last Child in the Woods, has identified yet another learning disorder that children are experiencing today. And he calls it NDD, Nature Deficit Disorder. This is a disorder that children get when they are disconnected from nature. And what he thinks the reason is, is that children today are spending between six and seven hours in front of a screen. 
So our, our health care providers here in Hawaii are telling us that one in three children today will be on dialysis in their life if things continue in the direction that they're going and that all children today are expected to have a shorter lifespan than their parents. Now, when you put all of these pieces of information together, like I just did for you, I can, I can imagine it's a little overwhelming. But the good thing about this is it gives us enough information to act, and to act now, because we know. We wouldn't want people later to say, oh, they knew, but they didn't do nothing. We do know. So, um, So let's just shine a light on some of the, um, the school gardens that are around on Hawaii Island. And then we'll just hook you around the island and look at nine garden programs. So the first garden, um, there are 60 school gardens on Hawaii right now. And over 3,000 students are gardening every day on seven acres of gardens. Last year, um, with just 14 schools reporting that actually weighed every single thing that the children grew, those 14 schools grew 7.4 tons of food. And there's now 30 regular garden teachers on Hawaii Island. So, you know, hmm. okay. So, one of the ideas um, that goes along with school garden programs is that schools become community food hubs. And last year at the Malai Culinary Garden of the Waimea Middle School, they ran a, a program called Crop Share, where the community gleaned food and brought it to school and then shared it freely with people in the community that wanted fresh food. They also ran a program for education so that the parents and the community could come in and learn how to make grow home gardens, home orchards, prepare that food. So this idea of school garden as being community food hub on the weekends um, goes along really nicely. So we're going to start in Waimea on our little trip around the island at the Malai, um, garden of the, Wai the Malai Culinary Garden of the Waimea Middle School under the direction of Amanda Ryu and her staff. So at the Malai Garden last year, the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students grew 6,000 pounds of food that they ate and gave away to the community in free gardens, in, free, in a free market. All the children, all the 6th graders in the school participate in a seed-to-table program, or actually a seed-to-seed -seed program. As you can see, this is their seed bank. Every time they come to the garden, they have physical activity, they, they talk about community food system, nutritional education, they coordinate it with their classroom core curriculum, and they have a very, very rich program there. At the Hononau Elementary School Garden, um, it's under the direction of uh, Melissa Chivers this year and is undergoing some renewal. But the reason I put these two pictures in here is because it gives a sense of what is important for the young child, especially in the beginning science. And that is this sense of observation and wonder. So these young boys over here who are being extremely kolohe in class were given um, hand lenses. And all of a sudden they discovered that there were these tiny little wasps that were all over the flowers of the cilantro plant. And it was much more fun to observe and to record those observations than it was to be kolohe in class. At the same time, these young ladies over here were watering the kalo and they um, and they discovered that when the water pools in the pico of the kalo, that it illuminates the veins underneath bright silver. So Miss Melissa says that the garden engages all the children to observe, to ask questions, to communicate, and to explore and try new things. And this is really what we want for the young child in their school experience. Kekulo Oehunui Kaimalino, a Hawaiian immersion school in Kona, is extremely serious about their food production. They have malas that surround the school, and they incorporate both um, Hawaiian crops, Hawaiian food crops, and cultural experiences, Hawaiian cultural experiences that come from the community. 
the um, Kumu Claire Loprenzi and Po'o Tim Lino are dedicated to Makahanaka Ike by Doing We Learn. And they bring regularly kapuna in from the surrounding um, towns to work with the children and really give them their mana'o from the past. Oh, and these young ladies who have just planted this bed um, said to Kumo Claire, um, can, can we please do a hula for the baby seeds so that they will grow? At Kohala Elementary School, this is um, Principal Danny Garcia surveying his new school garden, or should I say school farm. It was four acres. And this is Adriel Robitaille, the new agriculture natural resource teacher at Kohala High School, who took, who with his students in the summer of 2010, took that a raw space and create, made it into the Kohala school garden. And then Miss Ming Wei and Star Baker infused into that garden science and wonder. And today, a new intergenerational garden is growing next door. And on the other side, the fourth graders have taken over a large space for a native Hawaiian garden. And I hear there's also some chickens. At the Innovations Public Charter School in Kona, under the passionate direction of uh, garden educator Krista Donaldson, the campus is growing green. They have a, they have a school-wide recycling program, a zero waste program for all of their events. They have uh, gardens that provide both tasting for the children and afternoon snacks. There's fruit trees that dot the campus. They have a gray water program, a vermicomposting program, and a composting program. And as you can see, they educate the whole child, body, mind, and spirit. At Honaka'a High School, ag teacher Manuel Jadalong wants it all for his students. He has large um, field production, greenhouse production, hydroponics, aquaponics, uh, forestry program, student farmers market, and the most active FFA program on the island. At Kuokala Public Charter School in Puna, down by the Warren Ponds, uh, Principal uh, Susie Osborne and garden educators, Chioki Mims, and Prana Mando have created a middle school program that is an agriculture culinary program called Ike Aina from the Seed to the Table. And they have also, that's also the name of their new cookbook that you can get at their Ulu Festival on March 3rd at their school using only 100% locally um, produced foods. On Friday morning, the young people step into their outdoor kitchen and they make lunch for fortunate people like myself who, um, who come and are their guests on Friday mornings. Then in the afternoon, they step out into the malas that surround the school that are completely a'a lava, and they learn how to grow soil, how to harvest water, and how to have a true appreciation for all the natural resources that are needed for agriculture. At Kahakai Elementary School in Kona, gardens are growing around the school. The latest one is a is a grade one, two garden that was created by the doctors, their families and staff of Kaiser Permanente two clinics in Kona. They have large production gardens for tasting and a fifth grade student farmer's market every Wednesday. They have um, a new butterfly house, a new performance center going into their new gardens and a really large fourth grade native garden that is being built right now. And how many students does it take to fill a pot? <laughs> Clearly five. <laughs> At the Pauilo School Elementary and Intermediate School, um, this is our really longest running school garden program on Hawaii Island with garden educator Donna Mitz. This program has large gardens, two greenhouses, a small macnut orchard, fruit trees, a two acre pasture, with um, chickens, sheep, and goats, and a mid-level vermicomposting uh, area affectionately known as Wormville, where um, the part of the cafeteria waste is taken each day and turned into a rich amendment for the school gardens. So 
so as you can see, this was a very brief um, view of only nine of these 60 programs. Each one of them is, wor is worthy and unique. And really all of these programs today need volunteers and funding for teacher staff and for um, professional development. So if you're interested, please go to our Hawaii Island School Garden Network website, kohalacenter.org, and click on programs. So in summary, I would just like to say that school learning gardens and sustainability education brings life to schools and schools to life. We can have a healthy and sustainable future. We can inspire our young people to take a look at the world and see what they can do and give them the skills that they need to remake that world anew. And we can infuse in them these 21st century learning, sk learning skills that they are going to need to know. Critical thinking, whole systems thinking, innovation, creativity, problem solving, even infusing the arts into life. These are the outcomes of these hands-on, place-based, project-based programs that, give, that really serve as an entry gate for this larger idea of education for sustainability. Because really, we're all in this together and we're all connected. And everything we do and everything we don't do makes a difference. So thank you so much for coming today.